Welcome to the Belmont Journal, Belmont's own source for hyperlocal news and community updates. I'm Mike Crowley, your host this week. With the winter athletic season on for Belmont High School, remember that spectators parking for events at the Skip Viglarolo Skating Rink is restricted to Concord Avenue and Belmont High School's main parking lot. And please note that parking in the adjacent neighborhood and side streets is restricted to just one side of the street on Myrtle, Godin, and Oak Streets is posted. The Belmont Police Department strictly enforces parking and visitors are, violators are subject to fines and towing. You can check the schedule for all Belmont High School athletic events online at belmontathletics.net slash main slash calendar. Welcome to This Week in the Citizen Herald and welcome back Joanna Juvelis, Senior Multimedia Journalist with the Citizen Herald. How are you, Joanna? Great, thank you. So I understand that we have some news about the selection of the new police chief and, and I know that everyone is waited, waiting with bated breath. I know. Very exciting. There were two finalists for the police chief position. Mm -hmm. There was a total of five applicants and then the search committee and the outside consultant narrowed it down to two finalists who were Chris Donahue, Donahue right. who's a current lieutenant, been with the department since 1996, and assistant Belmont police chief Jamie McIsaac, okay. who's been with the department I think almost as long as, as Chris Donahue. Mm -hmm. So they each gave a public presentation Monday night, December 9th. Each one was an hour long and it was about their first year plans. And I sat through each of the presentations. Throughout the presentations, the select board asked them questions about their plan. Mm -hmm. And then after uh, Donahue went first, then McIsaac, and after that, um, they've deliberated in less than five minutes. They all unanimous, unanimously agreed that um, they want chose McIsaac. Even though Donahue was a great candidate, mm -hmm. McIsaac's leadership and management experience made him a, a stronger candidate and just the, the, the best choice for them. But they said they were both great candidates. Okay, so that, so, so when does he actually start? I know that the, okay. the current Chief McLaughlin's retirement. Um, um, end, of, end of the year, December 31st. Right. So as of January 31st, if contract negotiations go well, Jamie will be the new chief. Now, now he's laid out some transition, some he transition has. plans, his hasn't he? Plan, his plan included a lot about the transition, mm -hmm. just making a smooth transition, really communicating and listening aggressively. Uh, he wants to focus a lot on traffic enforcement. Which is a big problem. He wants to look at maybe um, removing the department from civil service so that they can recruit police officers just like General Motors does and, mm -hmm. and recruit a more diverse pool. But that would be up to town meeting whether or not to remove the department from civil service. And, and the, the, the key issue there is, is the interest in, in going for a more diverse pool exactly, of applicants. Exactly, exactly. And he's also looking at developing a five-year strategic plan. He's going to look at ways he can cut back on certain things, possibly regionalize different programs and services that the police department offers. He's going to look at uh, He's going to look at each one for about six months, each of these uh, many different things he's going okay. to be evaluating. But I think I also want to mention um, that Chris Donahue was a candidate for the police chief and was appointed exactly 13 years ago. But what happened was his contract negotiations didn't, um, they, they couldn't complete them. He, he, they couldn't agree. And, and so he and did then, not. And then yeah. Chief McLaughlin was, was hired. Right. But I do, from outside. Right. But uh -huh. I do admire uh, Chris for, you know, 13 years later going for the position again. And he did say that he would not be opposed to possibly becoming assistant police chief if, if he was appointed. Well, that's interesting. Uh, whether or not he'll apply, I don't know. Because yeah. that's the next thing. They have to fill the assistant chief and the captain position, and both will be posted. The captain position is a different application process. People have to take a civil service assessment mm -hmm. for that. The assistant police chief will be um, not quite like the chief of police, but you still you have to apply and interview for it. So we'll see. I think there'll be a lot of great possible candidates for that. Well, so it's it's welcome news that we have a we have a new chief. We'll have we will have a new chief and a, a, tra a transition plan. Um, chief McLaughlin's. Um, uh, retire, retirement event um, is going to be held in the, the 
select board room, right. December uh, 17th. At 10 a.m., in a. case anyone would like to attend. Yes, I'm sure All right. we'd love to see people there. <laughs> and Thank he will. It'll be a packed room. Thank you so much, Joanna. Last Friday, Greater Boston Area Youth marched to the State House to remind lawmakers that climate change needs urgent action. Belmont High School's Climate Change Club was part of the strike. David Webster, Belmont Journal citizen journalist, was there. We are in Poplar Square right now and at about 10.30 a climate strike is going to begin so we are going to be hearing from some speakers and there's a lot of energy here coming in today. There's a lot of youth and we plan to march to the State House where we will march in and pressure legis legislator. Green New Deal isn't just a resolution, it's a revolution which it has and that revolution <laughs> is reflected in the young people who are rising up. I'm Margo Danahy. Um, I'm the partnerships lead for the Boston Climate Strike. So basically, I facilitated partnerships with 25 organizations around Boston. Boston Climate Strike uh, is an organization built up of over 100 youth um, in the Boston area and we've been holding strikes and actions since last March. I'm Madeline Kitch and with Kate I co-founded the Climate Action Club this year. For me at least the science has been crystal clear for decades. What's really lacking is I think the legislature, the people, the people in government need to take action which is why this is here and going to the State House later on today. We've done a couple of things. Um, we've gone to a lobby day, we've done some striking and I learned about a paper bag tax that we're trying to implement in local stores. I've always been concerned for all the different types of endangered animals that um, are being affected by climate change and also many people in other countries. I think it's really important to try and stop climate change so these people still have a future and my generation and the generations after us have hope for a future. I think youth should be involved for many reasons. I think, first of all, youth provide an energy and momentum to movements that is unparalleled to any other um, age group. But also, we're talking about a crisis that is going to impact the youth and impact generations to come. We're going to be living with the impacts of this crisis for 80, 100 more years. So I think this is really a youth issue, and I have faith that we are the right generation and we're going to be able to stop it. Welcome to This Week in the Belmontonian, our weekly segment with Franklin Tucker, editor of the Belmontonian. Welcome back, Franklin. Thank you for having me. So let's talk about handicap parking. That's right. Uh, um, well, what was happening? Well, this whole story starts at the uh, select board, mm -hmm. and there was a re request by a person who lives on um, Belmont Street, uh, right, right next to the um, uh, Congregational Church. Okay. And uh, the person wanted a handicapped parking space, and he's uh, been in, in front of their home. In or? front of their home, mm -hmm. and he's been requesting it. He has uh, all the neighbors sign off on it. <clears throat> but then what happened is 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 that Roy Epstein who is a member of the select board, mm -hmm. asked the question, well, why doesn't this person uh, fix his, because he has a driveway. Yeah. So it's not like he doesn't have it accessed from, from his car to inside his house through a very small walk. It's just that it would be easier for him to go f just right into his house from the street. Roy Epstein asked a very simple question. Well, why doesn't he uh, improve his his yard or wherever that is and, and have that access there. And it turned out to be a very interesting question because many people in this town do uh, improvements to their homes, adding a floor, adding dormers, maybe uh, a new porch. Why can't this person also do it? Mm -hmm. You know, Is it a financial? Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just easier access. And we've seen this. Um, we've seen this where, where people ask, ask for handicapped parking spaces um, outside their house while they do have a large and sometimes a two a, a two lane um, driveway uh -huh. so, uh, so so how, how has the select board in the past typically treated these kinds of requests? basically it's been just like yeah go ahead 
Okay. You know, but, but now, what, what happened is that Roy brought up a, a good point, and I think everybody, including Glenn Clancy, who is our, who is our town engineer, um, said maybe it is time to have a policy because we don't have a policy. It's basically we just it just came before the selectmen or the select board, and they were just basically you know if 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 um, if it was re if it was requested and, and and there was no problem with uh, with the community with the community development or anything like that, they would just sign off on it. Now they're they're thinking about and I think it will come to pass where we will have. Uh, a series of questions, okay. checklist um, uh, of uh, things that you have to prove uh, to uh, to get that space. So it won't be just. So does that affect this case as well? No, not at all. Uh, this is will be grandfathered. Okay. Uh, it's already been approved. Okay. And he also had the, uh, uh, the, the the space was also next to the church, mm -hmm. so it could be used for church parking. And 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 the town told him, you know, you you can't expect to have this just by yourself. If somebody's in there for the handicapped parking sticker, you know, they have it. Yeah. All right. So, so um, you know, and there's also uh, good news about the uh, building. Uh, the the uh, new middle and high school, high school building. building. Yep. Uh, the furry first wing, the one that will be closest to uh, the, uh, the the uh, Harris Field. Uh, all the concrete has been laid. Uh, we're going to see steel go up in January. And uh, also the um, uh, committee, uh, the uh, building committee, has decided that they are going, if they do have money coming back, mm -hmm. they have made a list of seven... Uh, items that they are going to bring back. And uh, the first one will be skylights, so we'll okay. brighten up the place. Then they'll have also a cover over the uh, loading dock and also uh, heated um, <laughs> heated sidewalks in front of the uh, um, the two um, main entrances. So, uh, someone had, had mentioned to me the heated sidewalks and I thought it was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> in fact, in fact, the facilities manager of the town said it's something that's really important. Cause okay. So that's it. All right. Well, thank you so much, Franklin, and we'll talk to you next time. Thank you. Tiana Watson, Belmont's new youth coordinator, was here last week to talk about her work at the health department. Here's her interview with Belmont Journal's Roger Colton. Thanks for joining us uh, today, Tiana. You are the, the new youth coordinator for the town of Belmont. Uh, you joined us in June of this year? Yes, that's correct. Thank you for having me. And uh, what, uh, what brought you to the town of Belmont? Uh, why did you seek out to be Belmont's youth coordinator? So I actually have a stepdaughter in the Belmont school system, and we have been trying to find some events for her to go to. And I realized that I really loved being a part of the coordinating of events. I volunteered for um, event coordination before, and um, my supervisor for my intern role let me know that this job was available and so I decided to go for it. And, and let's back up for a minute sure. too because we talk about being the youth coordinator. Mm -hmm. what, what, what does that mean? Uh, what is the youth coordinator? Sure, yeah. So my role is to advocate for the youth the youth of Belmont and their needs and to fill gaps in any time with fun community-based events. Um, I really like to be inclusive and um, promote unique events for the youth that are fun and informational as well. And when we speak of youth, are there age ranges there? Is it uh, K through five, middle school and high school or uh, through middle school? We, our goal is to have events for all ages at, at some point. As of right now, we are really trying to focus in on elementary school and middle school because there is a lack of community events for those ages specifically. And you report to a youth commission here in Belmont, is that correct? Correct, yes. And uh, you have openings on that? We do, we have two vacancies right now. What, what would you see doing, not looking forward in the next six months, but mm -hmm. in the next year or two years? Where do you want to move the town? I think that there are a lot of issues and struggles that our youth face, especially nowadays with social media and electronics. And I would really love to see a more inclusive, um, safe, community-based involvement with the youth. I think promoting more face time with the youth is really where we should be. And I would love to include um, youth more in the community. 
And can you give us a typical activity? For a great example, we're trying to kickstart our Cops and Kids series event that um, happened 10 years ago when the former youth co coordinator was involved in Belmont. And so what we would do for that is have a series of events that integrate the youth with the police officers in the town. And right now, we have one scheduled for this Friday, which I believe is, um, this will air after, but it is a pizza party at the Belmont Library. So I believe a lot of um, elementary school kids will go to that. And it's just a way to familiarize our school's youth with um, the town employees. Well, and that's an, uh, something I would never have thought of, but mm -hmm. uh, do you work with the schools? Do you work with the other town departments the, uh, directly with parents, or is it all on your own? We are trying to promote more um, unity with other departments in the schools for sure. I think it's really great to promote that and to show unity for our youth. Um, we are our own entity though. And uh, the library, do, mm -hmm. you, uh, uh, do you have, is reading an activity uh, or is it more active activities? So this one... Did that question make sense? It did make sense. Okay. This one will, will be a little more active. Um, I think uh, youth really like options. So for all of our events, of we, we like to have options. So for this one, for example, which again will already happen by the time this airs, we will have a canine demonstration, we'll have pizza, we can have, um, I think it's a show and tell of their uniforms, a question and answer, and also reading. So just a lot of fun stuff. That's Keep great. it nice and fun. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us today. Of course. Thank you for having me. On December 7th, the Belmont Garden Club held its holiday green sale at the Chenery Middle School. Joanna Juvelis met with some of its members before the event to get some helpful tips on making beautiful holiday decorations. Today I'm leading the boxwood workshop. Um, we're making, decorating boxwood trees and making topiaries to sell at the green sale. But if you think of, of a circle and dividing the circle into thirds, um, you can have a well-distributed decoration. Some of the trees have ribbons in them. Um, some of the ribbons are meant to be um, bundled, bundled at the top and then have streamers coming down, those would go into the, the three pattern. And my theme is a partridge in a pear tree. So far I've got ribbons and the partridge, but I'm working on the pears. And they're going to go also in the tree. And each one of them has been wired so it's easy to get them in. And make a statement. And what we do is start with structure. Um, the um, oasis is wet, damp. This uh, birch stick is in a pot with some uh, plaster of Paris so it holds it steady. Probably put a few rocks in here to stabilize it once it gets heavier with the uh, greens. And then we just take boxwoods that have been donated or purchased and we insert them throughout the surface of the, um, of the oasis. And then eventually this, this fellow is going to get a haircut and you make it a little more uniform and the smaller pieces will get stuck in to fill in around the block. Then we, um, after that's done, we decorate with bows and um, different sorts of uh, berries, pine cones to give it a little pizzazz, and we'll probably put a large bow in, on the stick. So that's pretty much the process, and I hope people uh, appreciate what goes into it. But we also have a very good time catching up with our friends while we're doing the work. So uh, this is all for the benefit of uh, various beautification projects around the town. And now we have Chet Messer's update on sports. A special thanks to Watertown Community TV, which shared the footage of the Thanksgiving football game with us.
On Thanksgiving Day, Belmont Marauder football prevailed, defeating the Watertown Raiders 24-7 under windy, cloudy, and cold conditions. Watertown was the first to score on a tricky pass play. Late in the first half, Belmont tied the score at 7 with a touchdown pass from quarterback Avery Anno to Preston Jackson Stevens. He connected again on a two-yard pass play to Zach Hubbard in the third period. And after the point after, Belmont led 14-7. to Later in the third period, Hampton Trout, the Belmont kicker, made good on a 35-yard field goal, increasing the Marauders' lead to 17-7. On the second play from scrimmage in the fourth quarter, Waterpound quarterback Brandon Cook hooked up on a 20-yard pass play to Alandro McGuire, narrowing Belmont's lead to three points. Belmont clinched a traditional Turkey Day football game on an 88-yard pass play from Arnold to Matt McHugh, to the delight of the cheerleaders and the Belmont fans. Hampton Trout kicked the extra point for a final score of 24-14. Belmont was ranked number five in Division Three by the Boston Globe's power rating system with a 6-4 and four winning record. The Monday after Thanksgiving, the basketball teams began practicing for their upcoming season. Both the boys and girls basketball teams are defending champions of the Middlesex League. The ongoing construction of the new high school has resulted in some adaptations by the coaches. The wrestling team is now practicing in the cafeteria each afternoon since the upstairs gymnasium has been converted into a locker room. We will be following all of the winter sports and coming editions of the Belmont Marauder Sports. Belmont's Unitarian Universalist congregation, the First Church in Belmont, held a social action holiday gift fair uh, December 8th. Roger Colton was there and met with Kathy Crowley, the fair organizer. We're here at the Social Action Holiday Fair, First Church in Belmont, for our annual holiday fair that benefits a variety of charities. Since 2009, we've had the fair, and we have invite um, vendors who represent a charity to come and have a table. We don't charge for the table, but we do require that 50% of the proceeds go to a um, to a beneficiary that's aligned with our Unitarian Universalist ideals. We um, decided that we'd like to have a holiday fair, but we'd like to to do good while providing shoppers with a chance to get very unusual gifts for those on their holiday lists. We do support organizations near and far, Africa, El Salvador, the Dominican Republic, uh, many places in Africa. We have a group called the Alphabet Rockers, a native of Belmont, a young woman, who has just been nominated for her second Grammy, has an organization that makes music to empower kids to stand up against hate. We also send money right next door to Waltham House, which is a shelter for homeless LGBTQ youth in our community and that are on this, living on the streets of Boston. Here in this frenetic holiday season, we're happy to provide a place for people to use their shopping dollars for, for good and to think about that, yes, they can get some very interesting and unusual gifts for the people on their list, but it, they're also providing a great service to others and they're thinking about others. The feeling of getting to be part of a larger world than what we usually get to find in our communities is something that is very special here at the fair. And now it's time for our community calendar with Jane Peters. Jane tells us all about what's happening and what you can look forward to in Belmont this week. 
Hi everyone, I'm Jane and this is your community calendar for next week. Have you ever painted with water? Learn to make a marbled silk scarf at the Beach Street Center on Tuesday at 5. Using the art of floating ink, you can make a one-of-a-kind silk piece for yourself or to gift to someone this holiday. Sign up at the Beach Street Center. Belmont Public Schools, in collaboration with McLean Hospital, present on Managing Stress and Anxiety at the BHS Little Theater on Tuesday at 6.30. McLean clinical psychologists will present on the topic of anxiety and its impact on children and teens, strategies for supporting your child in ways parents help and hinder their child's ability to develop resilience. Creative teens can attend a workshop with Papercut Zine Library to learn how to make your own zine. These indie self-published magazines of art, opinion, and anything else. This workshop for grades 6 to 12 takes place on Wednesday from 2.30 to 4.30. Sing and dance with children's musician Jeff Jam on Wednesday afternoon at The Loved Child. Children of all ages are welcome from 4 to 4.30. TLC will be collecting new or gently used items to donate to the Room to Grow organization. Visit thelovechild.net for more information on the sing-along and for info on items needed. Belmont Light presents a winter celebration on Thursday from 3 to 7. Bring donations of new and gently used blankets, bedspreads, comforters, and quilts for those in need. And stop by for hot chocolate, warm cider, and a special appearance by Frosty the Snowman. You can join the Cornerstone Baptist Church in their community carol sing and open house on Sunday at 2.30. Enjoy ensemble and solo pieces and select readings from the Christmas story from the Bible. All are welcome to this Christmas celebration. And that's all for next week. If you'd like your event featured in Belmont Journal's community calendar, you can send your event info to fred at belmontmedia.org. We finish our show with a programming update for your Belmont Media Center channels. Be sure to watch well, that's all for this week. I'm Mike Crowley. This is the Belmont Journal, and we'll see you next time.